Uh, the other question he said was, or she said, she said, how long are you going to live like this? I'm going to live like this as long as possible because I want to go down the coast. I want to go over to the French canals and I want to come out to the Mediterranean because one, I'd like to do it for myself. But two, I do like making videos and I, I would really like to do that because I think they make fantastic videos because France is always a bit better, if you know what I mean. Um, so that's what my plans are. I've certainly no plans to jack this in. As I say, I've been doing this for three and a half years now, and there isn't one day I've actually woken up and thought, shit, I don't want to be doing this anymore. Have you sailed, i.e. using wind? Yes, I have. I was doing it for quite a while. But I'll tell you the reason why I've got the mast down. And the reason I've got the mast down is because there are so many bridges here on the broads. This boat has quite a hefty mast, and... Um, it really is a bit of a mission to get the mast down. This is a sea boat. It really is a pain in the ass to get the mast down all the time. And because the rivers are very, very winding, it's a little bit too big for this to tack anywhere. I can't really get the momentum. And, you know, for the sake of sailing for about three or four miles, it's just a lot easier to bring the mast down and use it as a cruiser. And that's what I've done, actually, for the last two years. So... I am looking forward to getting the mast back up again and doing some sailing because it's very exhilarating. However, it's going to be better on the south broads because you get about a 20-30 mile stretch down there. Um, the traditional broad sailors are a lot more suited to this on the bridges because basically they have wooden masts which are counterweighted at the bottom and they can literally just drop the masts quicker than a crack or can drop the knickers and poke them back up again for the bridges you know once they're through this is why i got this boat cheap because if you ever come across something like a westerly centaur or, or something up here people can't really sell them because most people don't want to um, mess around with the masts because unless you've got a very unique setup and you've got a big heavy mast you don't really want to be doing it three or four times a week and another thing is when i when i have the mast on the tabernacle and i've dropped it down it hangs over the boat by about 15 feet so when it gets really crowded up here in the summer I don't really want that happening because on one occasion I had a higher boat reverse I had a higher boat reverse and the mast actually went through the back windows which were French windows French doors and straight into their cockpit and I just heard this woman scream and uh, looked out the back and my mast was in the boat just some chap just said, how long would it take to get to France in good conditions? And does the keel ever hit the bottom? Yeah, I've run aground a few times. Um, how long would it take to get to France? I've absolutely no idea. And to be honest, I don't want to think about it. I just want to do it. <laughs> so please click some more adverts, will you? I can get there a lot quicker. I have hit the bottom a few times. There's a couple of locations. Going up to Dillham, I ran aground there. And um, I, there's a place called Lodgen on the South Broads. If I get the tides wrong there, I come to a standstill. But it's not an aggressive uh, substrate. It's not an aggressive bottom. It's silt. It's mud. It's sludge. You just come to a standstill. It's all peat here. It's all That's all it is. So I've only ever hit something hard once. I Whatever that was, I don't know. But it gave me a bit of a fright. My draft is about 1.1. And I've got three keels on this, and most of the places I'm good as gold. Um, it can be a bit irritating when you do hit something, like a tree log or something. Um, but I think anything over about 1.1 you might be getting in trouble up here, because it's not deep water. It, it really isn't deep water at all. And I, think, I think most boats are probably a lot less than that. What do you think of the kebab shops in Yarmouth? I don't know. <laughs> the only shop I've ever been to in Yarmouth is um, Aldi's and Asda's. Um, I probably wouldn't go in a kebab shop in Yarmouth, to be honest. I, I don't like going kebab shops in most places. They all look, always look a bit ropey. Not the best looking places, are they? Oh, stay clear. Yeah, okay, well, I'll take your advice there. I thought you had a motor cruiser. Could you pop out to see down the coast and then the Thames to Oxford, etc., all around Britain? Do you ever receive... Uh, always a good question. Do you ever receive unwanted attention from thieves and vandals? Well, I must tell you, you do get a few nutcases on the river. 
and I think on uh, canals you get more gypsy types. But one chap came up to me once and asked me if I knew how to raise and lower his mast. I said I did, and I spent about two or three hours um, showing him how to do it. And a week later, he was standing by my boat threatening to throw paint over it for whatever reason. So you do get some nut jobs. When I go to the city, I can see... It's, it's nice going into the city, Norwich that is, but I, I must admit there is quite a lot of... Well, there, there's no easy way to put it. There's a lot of druggies. And they seem to hang around the river, so I never spend the night in the city. I know people who've had the boat climbed on in the night, and they've had stuff. I that they've had stuff stolen. Oh, here we go. Not sure if you answered this yet. How do you make money to live this lifestyle? Just to quick, quickly say that again, because I have answered it with great difficulty. Let me just say that it's it's bloody hard. But if it wasn't for the internet, I wouldn't be able to do this. Um, I, I do know people who have had dinghies stolen, um, stuff like this. Do you have any interest in sport fishing? No, I was very keen on fishing when I was a kid, but I, I see it in a different light now. Um, I see it in a much different light now. I feel a bit sorry for the fish, actually. But saying that, I think if I was um, somewhere else, I would be a bit tempted to do some big game fishing because it just looks a bit exciting. Look, I think if you're going to catch a fish and eat it, then it's a different story. But I don't understand the point in people catching fish and then throwing them back in the river because I do see them floating down the river dead. Um, so, no, I'm not a big fan of fishing, but I, I have been. But just to go back to that question about thieves and vandalisms, uh, there are thefts up here. Uh, people's outboards and stuff does go missing. I think diesel can be an issue sometimes. I, I'm i always with the boat, so it's never really been an, in, uh, an issue for me. Um, but it's certainly something I consider. And I wouldn't leave the boat unattended for a long time. I think security on a boat is something you really got to look into, actually. Um, enjoyed your live chat. I'm off to get a kebab now. Good. I hope you don't get some botulism with that for free. Things like generators and stuff, obviously you've got to put them away. But uh, I think having a dog on a boat would be a good thing. Got a hello from Hungary, that's good. Maybe you are answered already this question, but I wasn't online. When you plan to start your trip to the south, EU? I'm hoping to go in the spring, because if I have to spend another summer here, I'll probably go a bit nuts, to be honest. I'm going flat out now to make the money that I require to do this trip. Um, so that's why I'm here where I am now, because I'm on the computers all day. It all boils down to money at the end of the day. A lot of people um, have quite a lot of success with Patreon on YouTube. Have you thought of having a folding bike on board to extend your traveling shopping range? Yes, I've thought about a uh, folding bike. In fact, I got offered one recently. I think I'd rather have a mountain bike, actually. Folding bikes are a little bit too much, um, well, a bit ladyish, aren't they? I like something a bit more rugged. And... Do you need a passport when entering French waters? Yes, you need a few things, actually. You need to have a. You don't need a ticket around Britain, but you do in France. You need a certificate of competence. You've got a VHF ticket, and you've got a. I think the other one's called 70 or something. I forget now. Um, but security wise. It's not too bad up here. The police, there is a, a police force for the Norfolk Broads. They're called the Broadspeed, and they're pretty switched on, actually. So, uh, But unfortunately, a few things do go missing. Folding bikes are no good. Well, you're quite right there, actually, because I remember having one as a child, and um, I had a few nasty incidents on that. But uh, if, uh, when I go to France, I'll definitely be taking a bike, because at the end of the day, if you've got a quick release, you can take the wheels off, and you can just bring it inside, or stick it on the bow. Um, but I see a lot of people now have got these electric bikes. But to be quite fair, I think if I had a bigger boat, I'd probably get something like a mobility scooter or something. All those sedgeways, because, you know, anything that involves physical effort probably isn't a good thing, is it? But um, what was I going to say then? Uh, my mind's gone blank now. So is there any more questions at all? My word, we've nearly been online an hour. That's bloody good going. 
Well, as I, anybody who didn't hear in the beginning, the reason why I did this is because I didn't want to make any more footage of the same old, same old on the Norfolk Broads. And um, by my own admission, oh yeah, by my own admission, I am horrendously delayed getting to my um, other locations. But uh, it's got to be done, and I thought maybe I'll do something a little bit different this time. Maybe something a bit more interactive. And um, I thoroughly enjoyed it, actually. Uh, I thought there'd be probably a few more questions, but there you go. I hope I've answered a few. And um, if anybody fancies going living on a boat, look, it's not for everybody. I totally get that. I think you've got to like your, like your own company. Um, you've got to... You gotta like boats. It can be frustrating with storage space, but I don't know. It just seems to click with me. It just, it's great. I like it. I like it. A lot of people might say it's a bit of a cop out, but so what? It's a great cop out.